Welcome dear students. Today we are going to learn a poem, No Men Are Foreign, written by James Crickup. This is in class 9 English textbook, Beehive. So let us get the ball rolling. Throughout this video, I will give you a short introduction to the poem. I will share some noteworthy facts about the poet. I will share the key points of the poem. We will read the poem and deconstruct its meaning. So let's get started. With the loss of thousands of people in the fast world war, throughout the world social, political and economical aspects were changed abruptly. Then, as it was the time of need for peace, various authors, painters, artists raised their voices against war and condemned its malpractice of merciless killings. Among them, Wilfred Owen, known as a war poet, ironically criticized war by saying, Red lips are not so red as stained stones kissed by the English dead. Again, another war poet, Siegfried Sasson, remarked, I am not protesting against the conduct of the war, but against the political errors and insincerities for which the fighting men are being sacrificed. To promote universal brotherhood and to bring peace, Rupert Brooke wrote several poems and in one of his poems he said, War knows no power, safe shall be my going, secretly armed against all death's endeavor, safe though all safety is lost, safe where men fall and if these poor limbs die, safest of all. He wanted to paint the pangs of the innocent lives who dies in the battlefield. In spite of all the aesthetic endeavors, the Second World War opened the door of hell with the death of millions of people. Similarly, some authors came into the limelight after Second World War, and among them James Crickup was also well known. He composed this poem, No Men Are Foreign, in 1966. Let us know some noteworthy information about our poet James Crickup. James Falconer Crickup. He was born on 23rd April 1918. He was an English poet, translator and travel writer who wrote over 30 books including autobiographies, novels and plays. He became a fellow of Royal Society of Literature in 1962. He was educated at Westo Secondary School and then at King's College, Durham University. In Japan, he found acceptance and appreciation of his work and he settled there for 30 years, lecturing in English literature at several universities. Among his famous works, the plays such as True Mystery of the Nativity and The Meteor were noteworthy. His What is English Poetry? is an autobiographical work. One of his travels, Tokyo, brought him fame. He passed away on 10th May 2009. In the title of the poem, we found a word that is foreign. The word foreign stands for unknown or belonging to other countries. This poem is written in five stanzas and each stanza consists of four lines. Four line stanza is known as quatrain. So the first quatrain of the poem goes like this. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we, sell, we, we all shall lie. So this poem begins and ends with the same line, no men are strange, no countries are foreign. It emphasizes the fact that all men are same and equal, no matter what country they belong to. All people who live on this earth belong to one human race. The uniforms owned by the soldiers of different countries are different, but the human being is the same. All breathe the same way. All the soldiers are our brothers who walk upon the same earth and upon, this, upon their death shall lie in the grave the same earth. The second quatrain of the poem goes like this. They too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvest and by world's long winter starved. 
their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own here in this quatrain they refers to the foreigners who belong to other countries the poet says that everyone gets sunlight air and water in equal measures which means that god doesn't differentiate between people of different countries all people do farming during the time of peace they live a relaxed life and eat the things given to them by nature the way we starve during wars and winter time is the same for those belonging to the other countries the poet says that even their hands are as ours they work hard just like we do he gives all these examples to highlight the similarity between people belonging to different countries in the third quatrain the poet says remember they have eyes like ours that awake or sleep and strength that can be own by love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand the poet reminds us here in this quatrain that the readers uh, that god has given them eyes like ours and which open when awake and close when they sleep similarly he has given them strength which can be own through love one thing that is common in every country that is life that exists in form of plants animals and human beings and we can recognize them and can realize that they are like us the fourth quatrain of the poem goes like this let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispose us betray condemn remember we who take arms against each other the poet says that we should remember that whenever someone tells us to hate a person from another country then we deprive ourselves of their love cheat ourselves and condemn humanity we should not consider anyone to be our enemy the last stanza goes like this it is the human art that we defile our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own remember no men are foreign and no country is strange in the last stanza the poet wants us to keep it in mind that whenever we pick arms against other nation it leads to a lot of bloodshed fire and death these dead bodies accumulate on the earth and make it impure the fire and dust which erupts during war pollute the purity of the air the phrase hell of fire clearly reminds us of the hell fire you that is used in first world war he ends the poem by writing the first line in reverse and saying that remember no men are foreign and no country is strange through this poem the poet wants to promote the concept of universal brotherhood all men are alike they eat live and die the same way we should not consider the people of other nations our enemy with this i come to an end of this poem i hope all of you have understand the lesson thank you